Hello, my loves. Welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. My name is Jessica Alexandria. For meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you guys that are old friends and family to my YouTube channel, welcome back. I hate to laugh at the start of this video, but I was just about to say, how is Mercury retrograde, like, how are you hanging out with Mercury retrograde? And I was, as I was doing my intro, I started cracking up in my head because guys, look, Look at the difference in my fingers, right? We have a full set of nails on this side and then we have broken broken nails on this side. Like literally they're all plucked off. And if that doesn't summarize my Mercury retrograde so far, then I'm not entirely sure what does. Oh my God, you guys are definitely gonna have to let me know how you're hanging in there. Also, to put everything out there in the open too, we are prepping for this incoming hurricane and. I can't tell you how a full moon, a full super moon, and then Pisces energy, which rules the ocean and rules massive storms, major storms, all of those factors coming into play. How did I make time to make this video today? Well, because I knew, <laughs> I knew I wanted to come in here and spend time with you guys and break everything down because this full moon, I mean it when I say this, this feels like it's going to be a game changer. Now, I'm going to dive right in, partly because I don't have a lot of time today. Like I said, we are prepping for this hurricane. There's a lot of preparations that still need, need to be, um, need to go underway. And that takes some time. On top of that, um, yeah, I just have like my regular work and stuff. I don't want to waste any more time. I want to go ahead by saying that a lot of any content that I'll be re referencing in this video that if it's new for you, you can revisit past videos that I've posted recently and you'll be able to check in on the energies and what's been leading up to this place instead of me reiterating the same energies, right? And the same things again and again. So first things first, I want to remind you that full moons always are about massive, massive change and release and letting go. And that requires a hefty amount of surrender and trust in the divine plan. It can break down relationships, it can break down businesses, it can break down things that you thought were solid. And it's not just the full moon that does it, it's the trigger of the energy of the full moon. It's the energy leading up to that. So just a quick reminder that remember we had, have Saturn retrograde, Pluto retrograde, Neptune retrograde, Chiron retrograde, Uranus soon to be retrograde, Also, but we have Mercury now currently retrograde. So before I dive into the energy of the full moon, I want to just say that there's so many pieces of our lives already that have been broken down or have been revealing parts that have been fractured that aren't healthy, that aren't meant to work out and aren't meant to carry for the long haul. This doesn't need to be a whole situation where you need, to, you need to completely discard all of it and just toss it out, but it's a hyper awareness, right? It's a hyper awareness of the things that simply is not cohesively flowing together. Does this mean that life is always going to be pretty and perfect? Wrap it in gift wrap and put a, a ribbon on it? No. I mean, some parts of life feel that way, but for the most part, there's a lot of adjustment and reevaluation that needs to happen, needs to occur. Now, as much as I am very specific and detailed and thorough when I'm pulling a chart, you won't see 89% of that energy because... I'm reading the charts for a general audience. For you guys, if I was pulling your individual charts one by one, it will be able to I will be able to detail the specifics of this. However, what we are all witnessing from a general from a general uh, position is the breakdown again of things that have we have gone grown accustomed to that simply cannot continue on the way that they have because they're breaking energy down, they're breaking our health down or whatever the case is. So Pisces energy already, it's very important that we start off by saying that Pisces doesn't rel uh, delve in the realms of the logical, the practical, or things that make sense when it comes to reason. It's very much hyper-focused on spiritual, energetical, what is the vibration of this? And it also is very hard to pinpoint the exact location or to understand the exact issue of the problem, where it is that it's coming from, because it could be all these 
unknowable foreign things coming together to create the change that is really needed in your life or or whatever the problem is or whatever the, the solution is. It's really hard to pinpoint that. This is also one of the reasons why Pisces actually rules our psychology, our spirituality, our subconscious. Even though you don't necessarily see it, so to speak, it clearly has a massive, major impact on our day-to-day -day life and how those things impact us every single day. So whether this is falling in your relationships, whether it falls in your health, it's going to be really hard to address the actual problem. However, you'll see this major tidal wave coming in. So let's say, um, let's say this is something that you have already addressed. Okay, you've already, you might have had enough intuition because Pisces also rules the energy of the intuition. But there's enough knowledge there because maybe you're you understand what's going on around you. You understand what needs to be fixed, or maybe something doesn't need to be fixed. It needs to just be savored and enjoyed. Let's say you're already in that space. This Pisces full moon is going to take already what exists and and increases it, amplifies it, blows it up even larger um, out of, I don't want to say out of control, hopefully not for everyone, but it could, it does have a, a chance, a very high chance of intensifying current lingering energies here. So what do you do with these energies? It can be really tough, especially when you see that tidal wave coming in, Pisces rules the ocean. And also Pisces rules storms, so it just keeps getting bigger, 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 bigger. And also it's unpredictable. Why? Because we have Uranus, who is ruling our Earth, ruling our resources, ruling the things that we value here in the present now, is about to go retrograde. That's um, the, the 4th of September, so we're leading into Uranus retrograde. These are energies that we can't necessarily predict or pinpoint down. So do you kind of see how this energy is already so vast and so wide and so amplified and extreme and has so much depth? And like, how do you pinpoint and, and kind of, I don't want to say mold and manipulate it, but like, how do you get your hands on something to kind of uh, mold it a little bit to your, what you would ideally want the outcome to be? You simply can't. You simply can't. So what do you do? You work with these energies. How do you do that? Remember that Pisces energy is very, very spiritual in nature. It is all about higher vibration. It's all about um, mystical energies. It's all about mystery. It's all about the supernatural, the subconscious. So what you want to do is feed into those parts of your everyday experience, whether that be through visualization, whether it be through magic, setting intention, or realizing that there's an underlying for force here that is impacting the outcome. So if I know that, then I know that the best thing for me to do is to sit back, watch, and observe and maybe not be so reactive and hands-on, which is so hard anytime that there's a full moon energy. I don't know about you. I'm more of a doer. So when I see that something is kind of breaking down over here, I want to go in and fix that. Or maybe I want to address something or come over here. There's a lot of pieces, a lot of moving pieces. Not only are these pieces moving, but they're actively readjusting or breaking down. So it's going to be really hard for you to hold on to all of this at one time at the time of the full moon. The best thing to do is to understand what it is that you're working with. Take a big step back and, and, and watch and observe and then allow your intuition to flow, hopefully ideally without any type of panic happening or any type of idealization. Because remember... Pisces energy is energies, it's vibes. And if we're logically trying to predict or to control the outcome, we're going to find ourselves delving in the realms of all that can or all that can't. Either way, it's a theory. Either way, it's a concept. So by being present in the moment and really trying to ground yourself and center yourself and take things by um, take things like stride by stride. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but take it moment by moment, one step at a time. 
is the way to work with these energies. If you are someone who is really big on mysticism, on magic, this full moon is a wonderful time to set intentions, to breathe power into your practice in your day to day. For some of you guys, it's very understandable that the dramas or the responsibilities of every day of your everyday experiences are are kind of taking the lead over your spiritual practices, your meditative practices. Now would be the, a wonderful time to see and acknowledge how life really does shift and how you change when you are not honoring your ritual and your spiritual practices like you normally would. For some of you guys, you might have some groundbreaking energy when it comes to your core beliefs, where you stand now. Remember, we are always evolving as human beings. We're meant to kind of evolve. We're not meant to box ourselves into any one container or any one thing. So this is one of those times where you might need to reassess, especially after walking, currently walking through these retrogrades, but also preparing for the next series of retrogrades. How have you how have you changed? How have you have transformed thus far? And what does that look like? What does life look like for you? And Pisces, remember, is about visualization. It's taking something that isn't here yet and setting your sights on how it energetically feels. What do you envision for your life, whether that be vision boarding, whether that be setting intention, whether that be journaling, whether that be scripting, all of those things are very, very powerful when it comes to planning or co-planning, co-creating with the universe, the divine, whatever it is that you believe in, your future. So I get this question all the time when it comes to super moons. Jess, is it dangerous to manifest or to pray or work magic during the, the super moons or doing full moons. Absolutely not. I just really want to clear that up. Yes, there are so many people all over the internet that will tell you that super moons, the energy is shifting and changing and evolving very, very quickly and rapidly. I've always seen that as an opportunity when things start breaking down, whether that be across the globe, whether that be... Um, in like the housing market, whether that be in opportunities within your career, when things start breaking down, it's a reflection of what wasn't already working. And if you've been waiting for the perfect opportunity to step forward and present yourself as a leader or that you see this as an opportunity, it's in your best interest, especially if you feel called to, to step forward and say, I'm the perfect guy for the job. I'm the perfect person for this position. You should probably take me into consideration because I can lead this. I know how to work with this. This is my vision. I've been waiting for this moment. So I don't want the fear of the internet or those old wise tales to get into your brain and trump over your own intuition or... When things like this, right, when, when things start breaking down, opportunity starts presenting themselves, chances are you have already started co-creating with the universe as far as exactly what it is that you wanted. What if the intentions, the manifestations, the prayers are leading to the opportunities right now that are being presented right in front of you? So instead of panicking or falling back in fear, this is you understanding just how powerful you are and also positioning yourself to work with these energies again and, and make them your best friend. So when it comes to magic prayer and intention, there's never a wrong time in my in my opinion to connect to the divine, to go back to your ritual space, to work your magic. There's never a wrong time. If it feels good in your in your in your current, then trust that. And if that means that you need to cancel out the outside world and everyone else's opinions telling you that you are wrong, that now is not the right time, I want you to remind yourself or go back to that voice inside of you that says, listen, I know myself. I trust the divine. I trust my path. And when the divine says go, I go. When the divine says stop, I stop. So trust that. Remember, too, that Pisces is very spiritually connected. It is very, very super sensitive. So you could be someone who follows the masses and says, well, logically, there's all these shifts, there's changes, and things are amplified and extreme. Or you can say, well, honestly, that's my everyday experience 
per use. So if anything, it's matching my natural vibration. Uh, to be honest with you, there are more days when I feel like a storm over the ocean raging than I do a soft trickle of a river. That's just me as a woman. I don't know how you guys feel, but super moons and Pisces energy has, has or just moons in general, but definitely full moon super moons have always been my moment to shine. That's just been me and so far so good. I can't complain, but everyone to each their own, okay? When it comes to energy shifting and changing, remember that change is inevitable. It's not something that we should stop or prevent. It's something that we as individual magical beings, it's a blessing to be a part of. We are always actively evolving. And even when these planets are retrograde, yes, their energies are shifting. They're going within. But you even mirroring that energy of being reflective in your own path, in your own way, and what you want your life to look like has already shown me that you're doing the work and you're setting the intention and there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're moving from a higher space of intention, you can continue to manifest or pivot as needed. Nothing is ever set in stone, especially with these planets. So if you are putting your voice out to the universe and saying, this is, if things are changing right now, this is how I would love for it to take shape. This is something that I think would be positive. I believe from deep within my soul, deep within my spirit, that if you're on my YouTube channel, chances are you're someone who moves with the higher light and genuinely wants good for humanity for yourself. You're not trying to harm anybody for the most part. So, um, you setting your intentions during super moon times is probably things like you want a resolution when it comes to your relationships. You want to find the soulmate. You want to find the dream career. You want to find healing when it comes to your body. These are things that, again, a full moon will bring into your life if you're setting the intention for it. However, if you're falling back and saying, well, I need to be voiceless because it's a super moon and it's, and it's, it's, it's intense, then you might not get those answers that it is that you were hoping for. And this opportunity will come in like a big wave and then flow out. It will be someone else's blessing, not your own. Now, when it comes to those of you guys that are not comfortable with setting intention and not manifesting, this is an absolutely wonderful time to rest. I Just as powerful as this energy is, it's also very powerful equally to dive to the bottom, the depths of the ocean where the top of the waves can't touch you, they can't reach you, and just be really, really quiet within yourself. This is going to be one of those super moons that a lot of emotion is already coming up and a lot of energy is circulating around us in our, cos our cosmic world, our environment. So if you feel that you are going to lean into that spiritual mermaid side of yourself and dive really deep where it's quiet and find peace and restorative exercises, I highly, highly encourage that as well. Everyone's path is going to be different. This could be quieter activities. This could be researching new books. This could be taking long, luxurious salt baths, pouring um, water into your body so that you're feeling very, very hydrated and really capitalizing on the restorative energies that this full moon will inevitably, inevitably bring. Sorry guys, I'm a little tongue tied. Remember, I'm very Virgo and my ruling planet Mercury is retrograde right now in my sign. So that is why my nails look like this. Because <laughs> this has literally been life lately. If anybody can relate, I've never actually had this, I've never had this happen before where all of my nails are pretty much good on this hand and all of them are completely knocked off on this hand. It's, it's actually kind of wild, totally wild. Okay. I have some cards that I would like to shuffle and pull for you guys. And then after that, I really have to go finish um, prepping here. So give me just a second. I'm really feeling called to this tarot deck. I'm going to dive into this and then also we're going to get some of these oracle cards and we'll see what energies this full full moon will bring. All right my loves so I have our oracle cards pulled up and I'm shuffling with the tarot. I just want to ask really quickly if there's any messages that need to come up for the full moon that they be present now. We have nine of pentacles. It's funny that the nine of pentacles is the first card to jump up because I actually felt a connection to abundance like think about I don't know why but um, think about 
Pisces rules the ocean, so this would make sense why this is coming through. But think about how there's so many treasures from things of the past. For example, like pirates crossing the ocean or um, just really crazy shipwrecks, things that have happened before. And all of those treasures that literally sit on the bottom of the ocean. And Pisces rules that. These are secrets of the ocean, things that are absolutely wonderful and things that are absolutely horrendous. And I wonder how this full moon will, what it will bring up for you as far as what that treasure will look like and the wealth that it will bring into your life. Now, this, of course, could represent physical treasures like money or resources. However, what if those treasures look like parts of your history that have been holding you back, holding you hostage, things that don't get discussed but still find a way to play out in your day-to-day -day experience. For example, think about generational curses or the way that a family is wired to show up in certain situations or expectations or communication. And that's just a, a given. You just know that this is how your family reacts to certain things. And now this Pisces full moon, this Pisces full super moon is the clear connection in your brain, in your body, in your energy that says this is the this is what has been in this treasure chest thus far. This is what all of my family has been hoarding and holding on to spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and by at the time of the full moon, me unlocking this helps me to reveal what we've actually been holding on to because sometimes what we think we are holding on to, the value of what we're holding on to doesn't actually add up in value at the end of the day or what we're holding on to is we don't fully understand it. We can't really grasp what 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 it is. And at the time of the Pisces full moon, there feels like a major revelation when it comes to issues, things that we're holding on to from the past, not just you, but those who have come before you and how that plays into what you might be holding on to and your decision to release it, to surrender, and to ultimately to let it go. Now, I, I find it really interesting, the connection of the conversation of things from the past, because there's so many planets currently that are retrograde bringing up those past quote unquote treasures. Now, it doesn't necessarily always need to be negative things or difficult things or trauma. It can also represent thir certain things that, let's say, um, it, it's been a blessing for you. Maybe you find an old cookbook and your grandmother or great-grandmother or great-grandfather was an amazing chef. This cookbook has all of his little scritches and notes. And this is an abundance that pours into you into this present moment. So for everyone, it's going to be different. But I do want to say with, with nine of pentacles showing up, this feels like abundance of the past. Everyone, it's going to be different. Again, Knight of Swords reverse just showed up and this energy is reversed. So this is saying that there's some bit of information that was locked off or forbidden or taboo or something that you wouldn't have necessarily understand or fully grasp. And there's something about the Pisces full moon that you can dust it off or wipe a little smudge off and then you're like, oh, this is what it meant this entire time. What you do with that is ultimately up to you. But for the most part, I feel like it's contributing to your abundance in this present moment. For some of you guys I just heard, you might actually need to go looking for it or it's something that you might want to dig up. Or let's say if you're moving things around and you find an old box of you know photos and memories and letters, there might be something that kind of seals, seals the deal for you or provides a missing piece to the puzzle at this time of the full moon. For some of you guys, this is actually going to be a philosophy, a way that you look at life. For example, think about when things happen, like life just happens and you have this question in your head, why did this have to happen to me? Why did this have to happen to me? Or what was the purpose in this? Sometimes in our society, we try to find the positive, like it was for us to learn but sometimes it doesn't settle. The positive doesn't settle in our body. It's hard to, I don't want to say accept it, but come to terms with it and really like uh, find peace in that answer. Because some things, bad things do happen, right? Good things do happen. Life 
life be life in. So having said that, I feel like there is going to be a tremendous sense of freedom and peace from, and that would be what your wealth looks like. Think about this bird and how he's eating from this watermelon and the generosity that this person that's sharing this watermelon with him. And it's not just one watermelon. There's plenty more resources that he has to share and has to gain um, to give. So I think that there's going to be a lot of things here that are going to ultimately lead to your own personal freedom and peace of mind. Emphasis on the mind. Um, now that Mars at the time of this full moon is trans transiting into the sign of Libra, it's about partnership, alliances, but also harmony. How things all flow together to work in a way that is cohesive and wants to work things out instead of feeling like I have to fight for this, I have to strive for this, it this can't happen, this isn't this isn't going to work out. It when Mars enters into the sign of Libra, it's way more apt, it's way more adept to figuring out a solution and sharing that solution and splitting that solution. And Mercury retrograde in the sign of Virgo has been trying to find the missing piece, has been trying to find the solution, has been trying to find the words, and I think that that's ultimately what you will find. Now remember, Chiron has been retrograde in the sign of Aries, and, and this has been amplifying. Yeah, guys, look, three of wands, I can't make this up. Three of wands and page of pentacles. This is what you're looking for, whether it be the solution, whether it be resources, money, a, a, a piece of the puzzle that's been missing is something that you are, this full moon has the chance to bring to you, and everyone, it's going to be different. Remember that Chiron transiting through the sign of Aries has been... And even the North Node falling in the sign of Aries has been asking you to prioritize yourself, your own needs, your own resources, or your masculine energy. So how you are meant to, and everyone it's different, how you're meant to show up as a provider, as a um, protector, not necessarily a nurturer, but really leaning into your masculine energy with the North Node. And everyone's going to be different. If you have been someone where that energy has been off balance, then you will see that reflected in an imbalance in your relationships, how you're respected in your work, your resources, your money, um, how you feel about the world, society, things that you, if there's any pent up frustration, if this masculine energy isn't balanced and isn't sorted or isn't being utilized in the right, correct way, this is when you start to see the breakdown. So when Chiron retrograde has been transiting through the sign of Aries, this is highlighting those energies within you, but also um, partnerships and relationships and all things around you and says, listen, we, we should probably sort this out now. Is this fated? Absolutely, because we have Pluto, the planet of death and transformation, and also control is squaring off with the North Node. So this will trigger a lot of energy inside of inside of you. And it could bring up um, issues of control that stem from your past and from your childhood and those types of things. And these are not easy energies to navigate through. Some of you guys have really interesting feelings of disappointment or abandonment, abandonment issues when it comes to masculine energy. And this is why you yourself have been your own advocate, your own warrior, your own leader, and Chiron transiting through the sign of Aries now retrograde wants to readdress that issue and say, is it appropriate for you to still be on defense, for you to still be on guard? Do you feel like you're not safe in this world? Do you feel like you're not being protected and provided for? Do you feel like there's no opportunities for you? You do all that you can. You strive as hard as you can, and still something kind of sets you back. There's this energy here that the planets are bringing it up so that you can work through it and see it and then work through it and then see it and then work through it. It's very, very, it's very, very painful. So for everyone, it's going to be different, but I just want to let you know that it is faded for the most part. Now let me continue shuffling and seeing what else that we can find within the tarot. For some of you guys too, I'm just hearing the words like taking accountability this is a tough one, too, because Aries puts the energy on the self. How can you... Wow, guys, I can't make this up. Six of Cups is bringing up the issues of the past. Childhood trauma, childhood conversations, conflict, or if this is a present situation, it's how you're able to take care of your body. King of Cups here, Queen of Wands, Knight of Wands. How you take care of your body, how you take care of 
like the energies that make you feel vivacious and vibrant and capable and attractive and magnetic, if you feel like you constantly have to chase or if you're not being poured into in the way that you are showing up, especially, well, that's another topic when we talk about masculine and feminine energies, there needs to be a balance here or the passion will start to dwindle or there will be some level of burnout. So this is about, in a nutshell, and this is way easier said than done, but this feeling of how you, how your own mindset has has pr has prompted you to show up to this circumstance or many circumstances in your life where you are over giving, over extending, or not giving enough, or not getting enough. I hope that makes sense. Everyone's story is going to be different, but it all brings it back to I am. This is what I believe about myself. This is how I feel like I need to show up to the world. This is my identity. So let me show with you the last few oracle cards here, and then we will close right off. So first card, yeah, horse spirit, freedom is yours. Exactly. All of this is leading to your personal freedom. Sandpiper spirit, be playful. Good luck with that. For many of you guys, it'll be easier said than done. Lean into that play, lean into that creativity, or being protected will open up the door for you to be more creative, more playful, more kinder, more nicer, because you're not needing to be so on guard and defensive and fighting in that warrior energy all the time. And I know many of you guys can relate to that. Elephant spirit, learn from the past. Exactly. Exactly. Go back to that vision that it is that I had about the elephant not too long ago. Grasshopper spirit, take a leap of faith. Yeah, this is going to be the hardest thing, too, because it's you not knowing where that leap is going to lead you or maybe being called to leap even when you felt like you're not ready. But ultimately, it sets you up for success. Fingers crossed. Set intention that it does. Make sure that you're visualizing exactly what a life full of freedom really ultimately looks like for you. And don't second guess it and don't sell yourself short when it comes to abundance and securing ultimately the blessings that the divine has and sees for you. Okay. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me right now. I know that this was a little bit rushed, but again, we're trying to prep for the hurricane. I want to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.